Hi there, today we're unboxing a wireless IP camera. So this particular one is by a company called Anki. Details in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. A couple of things worth mentioning about this camera. It has a supported resolution of 1080p. It can do pan and tilt, auto tracking, two-way audio, and supports 64 gig micro SD cards. So let's take a quick look around the packaging. So it comes nicely packaged with some branding there. HD Smart Wireless PT Camera. Get a sweeping view of your house with a smooth pan and tilt IPC. Okay, HD in the corner coming around here. So HD video, plug and play, peer-to-peer -peer remote access, two-way audio, smooth pan and tilt. Okay, nothing on there, come around here gives you an idea of the app that you have to install. So my Anki and what's in the box. And coming around here and nothing much else. So, okay, so let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so I've laid out all the items you get in the packaging, so let me quickly go through them one by one. So initially you've got a quick start guide. This is in two languages, English and German from what I've seen and gives you a good indication of how to set this up. Okay, next you've got some screws and raw plugs to assist in mounting the actual camera if you're using the bracket, which is just there. Okay, next I'll show the bracket. So straightforward, I've shown this on other cameras as well. So you just loosen it here. You can adjust it accordingly. And the bottom of the camera, it just screws onto that. And then you just screw it using the holes there. Okay, next you've got power brick, and if I come in close, you can see output is five volts, 1.2 amps. Okay, ethernet cable with it, nice flat cable with this. And the length of this is just around a meter. And build quality is very good on there. Okay, next you've got a cable to actually power the device. And this is 1.8 meters in length. Build quality feels good on there as well. Okay, and finally, the actual camera itself. So, a bit of a different design to this, a bit chunky at the bottom and obviously motorized so this can move and the other directions you've got on there. Lens at the front and if I come in close that must be the speaker point coming around here, the mic point coming around the bottom just to show there's some vents here and obviously the hole for the mounting bracket. If we come around the back, I'll come in close as I can. 5 volts DC there, you've got a reset button, micro SD card slot, and an Ethernet point. So it supports wired connection and Wi-Fi. And in terms of Wi-Fi, it only supports 2.4G, not 5G. So keep that in mind. So if your router only does 5G, then this isn't going to be any good to you. So build quality-wise, feels okay, plasticky and glossy white around most of the actual camera. Rubber feet at the bottom, like with most, most cameras. And if I move it, obviously it stays firmly secure to the table. So not too bad in terms of build quality. Okay, so let's make a start at setting up this camera. So first of all, I'm at my Android phone here. If I click on the Play Store, and the app we wanna look for is My Anki. It's that one there. And let me click install. And let's give it a moment to install. Okay, so now it's installed, let's click open. Okay, it needs access to take pictures and record video, let's allow that. Okay, so it needs access to device storage and audio and also to manage phone calls. Okay, next if we swipe across, there you go. Just start it, okay, so we click there. And now we have to register an account, so let me do that off camera. Okay, so I've registered my account, so let me click sign in. Let's give it a moment. And there you go, that's what you're initially presented with. So click on the upper left corner, add a device. Okay to that. Okay, so it's saying the device list is empty, so let's click on the plus in the corner. Select the device, so it's PTZ. Let's go for that one. And this is what we're now presented with. We need to scan in a QR code. So the QR code's just underneath the camera. So let me do that off camera. Okay, so this is what we're initially presented with. Let me click add. Okay, network connection method. Let's go for Wi-Fi. 
Okay, the device is offline and we need to power it up. Okay, so let's plug in the actual camera. So the micro USB end on the cable here plugs into the back of the camera like so. And then the other end, the USB end, just plugs into the power brick. And nice that it's a USB to micro USB cable, so easily replaceable. Okay, now that's plugged in and just need to wait for it to initialize. There you go, sound of a water drop. So as soon as we've heard that, we know it's boot up correctly. So let's click next. Okay, as shown, press the reset button and release it in one second. You will hear a voice prompt. Okay, so on the back here, reset button. I'll just hold on to that. Waiting for receiving the wireless information. There you go. Okay, I've heard the voice, so let's click there. Next, it's asking for my Wi-Fi password. So let me enter that in off camera. Okay, so I've entered in my Wi-Fi password. Let's click next. Okay, the phone's emitted. Um, Connecting to the configs successfully. Okay, so the phone's emitted uh, an audio signal to allow the camera to configure. It's connected now, which is quite impressive. So quite a cool way of configuring a camera. So now we're presented with a dialogue which is asking to set a password on a camera. So this is good for security. You hear in the media a lot of times that cameras are configured and people don't change passwords. So this is a good way of setting a password straight away when you're setting one up. So let me enter in a password off camera. Okay, so I've entered in a password. Let me click apply. Okay, now it's asking for a nickname for the device. So I'll enter in camera. Click apply. Okay, now it's asking to select a time zone. So let's go for GMT. So let's click apply to that. And there you go, finished. Added successfully, let's click OK. And there you go, simple as that to add in. So now if I click on the camera. Okay, so on the screen it's saying slide on the screen to pan and tilt the camera and get more video angles. Zoom in to check more details. So let's click OK and let's try turning it. There you go. Responsiveness is good. Let's try adjusting. Okay, and can it zoom? Okay, so not too bad, a digital zoom. Obviously that's why the clarity is not that great. Okay, it's saying it's 1080p on there. Okay, so next, let me show you around the options you have available on here. So if I click here in the corner, you've got snapshot, video, and select all, and at the bottom it says you have no history records yet. Okay, so that's if there's any sort of activity. Okay, clicking here, settings, you've got about, Details there, firmware version, device name. Then you've got date, time, system upgrade. Okay, so it looks like there's a new firmware version available for this. Next, you've got restart, restore to factory settings. Okay, device password. So you can change the password here from what you set previously. Alarm. Okay, it's a motion detection's off at the moment, but let's enable it. And then you can have an alarm schedule between a certain time if you wanted that motion detection on, that's good. Okay, so it says alarm and recording will be sharing the same time schedule, confirm to save the change. Okay to that. So motion detection's on now, so let's go back. Okay, record. So continuous recording, there's no micro SD card in there. They don't provide one. Let me put one in there in a moment. Okay, coming down, SD card. Okay, so it's saying no SD card detected. Memo, got an enable option if I enable it. So please connect your camera and your cloud box to the same router. So some sort of cloud connectivity option on there. If I click on there, okay, enter cloud box ID. Okay, that's that. If I disable that again and come back. Okay, and cloud storage. Let's have a look what's in there. Okay, it's a cloud storage. You can enable that. Ethernet. 
so Ethernet's not plugged in, but you can have it wired in. There's the Wi Fi details coming back. Flip the screen, so you can flip it if it's positioned in a different way. OSD, so that's the actual time on there. If you wanted to display that text, you can go here and do that. Sound, there you go. Levels for the speaker and microphone. Frequency, okay, 50 hertz at the moment, but you can change to 60 hertz. Motion detection, okay, smart tracking. Oh, okay, they've got that. That's an interesting one to have. Let me turn that on. Go back from there, indicator light. So this is good, you can turn off the indicator light. And that's it, below there you've just got remove the device. So let's click up here, show what that shows. Okay, so it shows it in a different format and you can go into a grid format if you wanted. Let's go back. Okay, looking just below that, you can actually see the transfer rate. So looking here, 43, 62 kilobytes. Okay, now clicking down below, you can initiate a record. So you can find the video in my documents Turn that off, click here, get a snapshot, uh, microphone here, test one, two, three. So that's not going to work only because I'm doing a screen record, but I'll show that in a moment, and volume as well. Next, if I click on that, you can change the actual settings in terms of brightness, contrast, and saturation on the picture, sharpness as well, and mode auto day night reset close on them okay and let's go back from there and there you go there are the options you have available on there and pretty straightforward from what you've seen okay so next let me show how to put a micro SD card in so as simple as this there you go so let's go to SD card and it's picked up the SD card so not sure what's on there at the moment but let's just do a format just to wipe it so it's nice and clean to be used. Okay, successfully done. Just do a save and go back. And that's it, ready to go. Simple as that to set up and use. Okay, so for the next test, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop down here, turn off my Wi-Fi, come back on, and let's see if it connects in. So 4G, let me turn on my data. Should see 4G appear, there you go. And now if I click on camera, there you go. Okay, and if I turn it, there you go, and let me control it from here. Current time zone does not match the time zone, okay? But there you go, responsiveness is good over data. So nothing to do on your router, just works straight away, out of the box, and you can remotely connect to it and view the picture quality. Okay, clicking on here, interestingly enough, you've got 1080p, then you've got standard definition, if I go on there, and then okay and next click on standard definition click on smooth and finally on auto let's go back to hd so different quality settings there and that's to reduce the quality in case i guess you're having problems in streaming the video so you can reduce it down just to get a smoother picture on there so Good to know you've got that facility as well. Okay, so next I'm gonna demonstrate motion detection in action. So once it's turned on and there's motion detected, there you go, that's how a push notification comes to your phone. And if you click here, it actually grabs snapshot videos of what's happened. So you can just play back, give it a moment. And there you go. So it does a slight pre-record as well, which is quite useful, so you don't really miss anything. So that's really good in that way. And if I come out, and now put hand over it, there you go, motion detection still works. So really impressive, and impressed at how quickly it comes as well. Okay, so next, let me show the two-way audio in action. So there's a speaker icon at the bottom here. If I click on there, the speaker comes on, as you can see. If I click here on the microphone, press to speak, and if I press that, Test one, two, three. There you go. Does work, works well. Sound levels are good as well, but obviously there is a bit of a time delay as you speak and then a few seconds later or a second later, it sort of appears from the speaker on that. So not too bad. And I think clarity is good on there.
Okay, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this IP camera. Very simple to set up and configure. In terms of usability, you can remotely connect to it without opening any ports on your router. Picture quality is great on there, 1080p, and you can reduce the picture quality in case you're having any sort of speed issues with seeing the picture on there. I like the fact it's got motion tracking on there, and this allows the camera to actually follow any sort of detected movement and track it in the background. So there you go, hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details in the description below. Thanks for viewing, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.